What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to continue enjoying weird Canadian winter activities. Weird in the best way possible. This is a part two video of this fantastic compilation of awesome Canadian winter stuff that's being shown. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to go back and watch that, or, or you can be weird and watch this one. You can watch part two first, be really weird. Either, either way, you're in the right place for some strange, enjoyable <laughs> Canadian winter activities. This video has been a very pleasant surprise for me. Um, last time when I left off, we were at this, uh, this crab, um, which now that I'm looking at it, has a hat and kind of looks like a snowman, except that it's a crab. So, that's just perfect. <laughs> that is just perfect. Uh, the activities in the first video were really pretty great. So, I have high hopes for this part two. So, let's take a look. Hey everyone, it's Raymond from Traveling Foodie here, and if you're looking for a crazy delicious thing to do in the winter, then look no further. You'll want to check out the Lobster Crawl Festival in Nova Scotia. Oh! Oh! Look at this thing! That thing, it's claw- it, I don't know if it's how he's holding it, but it's claw is as big as this man's head. Um, but what do you want? You're at the- <laughs> you're at the Lobster Claw Festival, Nova Scotia. All right. The festival happened. Dude! I'm sorry, I don't want to keep- <laughs> I can't pause it on every single lobster that pops up here, but I'm just not used to this. That claw is enormous, to say the least. It's every winter for the entire month of February, from Barrington, which is the lobster capital of Canada, to Pegasus Cove. Enjoy some lobster rolls or fish cakes with lobster cream sauce for lunch. Okay. Okay. You can end your night by doing a hands-on experience of a traditional Nova Scotia lobster dinner. Okay, you know what? I don't mind this. The In the part one, it was mostly activities. Uh, interesting Canadian winter activities. This is the first thing that's like... Let's all calm down. <laughs> let's let's go to a food festival. Enjoy like some some lobster. This is like semi normal, but with giant massive killer lobsters. One of the best parts is getting to try some crazy lobster creations, like the lobster gelato. Oh. This came out slightly sweet with a slight savory taste of lobster. I was never mind. I thought <laughs> I thought this was gonna be relatively normal. But we're making ice cream out of the lobster. I don't know what we're doing. So surprise. And a great way to stay hydrated in the winter? Lobster beer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, they look happy. I don't know. I'm, I'm going all out. <laughs> How do you make beer out of lobster? Don't answer that. Huh. Please don't mind me being selfish with my beer. <laughs> Alright. What, so what do we I have here? Green from Have Baby Will Travel. As a Canadian family, we needed to find a way to embrace our long cold winters, and one of those ways is definitely hockey. Obviously, my son plays hockey, and every winter we find ourselves in freezing cold rinks. Wait. Well, I don't know if the whole, if her little segment is about this tiny little ice rink they made in their backyard, maybe? But this is cool. All over the GTA, the greater Toronto area, but when we have a chance to get out of the city and onto a frozen pond, pond hockey, there really is nothing like it. Look how tiny that net is. <laughs> I've never seen a hockey net that tiny. Not that I get any opportunity to observe uh, hockey, especially in real life, but oh, what a cute little hockey net. No, and I've never even ice skated on a frozen lake, uh, for that matter. You'll often, you'll often hear NHL players wax poetic about the beauty of playing on a pond, and hmm. I have to say there definitely is something very special about skating on a frozen lake. Yeah. Well, I feel like I have zero ability to determine 
if the lake is safe to skate on. I don't even own ice skates. I don't know what I'm talking about. But if, in this uh, in this hypothetical situation, um, maybe I've been near frozen lakes where I wanted to like step on it and kind of fool around. I didn't trust myself to know if it was safe or not, and I certainly didn't trust the other Americans around me to determine if it was safe or not, so I've just never gotten to do it. So it is special. Now it's time for a musical interlude from Drink Tea and Travel. What? Okay. What? Yep. Yep. I'm told... <laughs> told this is how Canadians can uh, regain some of their sustenance, some energy, by... Uh, taking off their clothes and rolling around in the snow. That's, that's just, I think that's scientifically proven. Yes. We're, we're watching a natural, a Canadian in their natural state. Hmm, this is just kind of nice. But seriously, I guess this is like the most chill, <laughs> especially after part one. This is like the most chill part of like the whole video so far. This is kind of nice. Oh, how fun. Hi, I'm Yashi from Parenting to Go. My kids have taught me how to embrace these Canadian winters, whether I am watching them make snow angels, watching them run through parks, or if we're walking through snow sculptures. And Caribou Crossing, that is one of the most Car beautiful things I have ever seen. Caribou Crossing. Talk about something you'd never see in America. Pretty cool. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andrea, and I am from MommyGarris.com. And the reason I like winter is because we really have no choice here in Canada. It's like five or six months long you imagine <laughs> that's a good way to put it uh <laughs> you have no choice but to at least acknowledge the winter become one with the winter if you're lucky you maybe even have fun in the winter i mean after these two uh videos of canadian winter activities there's actually a lot of fun to be had Jen sitting at home doing nothing for half the year Oh, that's right, I can because I was that person until I started skiing about five years ago. Ah. And I do still love skiing, and I love skating and tobogganing oh. and all those very typical winter things. But you know what I also love? Horse sledding. What? <laughs> Wait, they're tiny, they're like small horses. Is this, n is this common? I, you know, I've been, I've been pondering that question with a lot of this stuff. Uh, but this is the first one that really makes me think, are Canadians really going out with horses tied to sleighs? Like, this is, this is like fulfilling, uh, like an imaginary fantasy Americans have when they think of, like, average Canadians. They're like, oh, they're all just <laughs> being pulled around in, uh, through Canada, the highlands of Canada on sleighs with horses, and now here I come to see that it's true. Still, I mean, don't get me wrong. Fun. <laughs> Looks fun. Um, obviously, in America, uh, we do have, oh, going down snow hills on tubes and uh, snowboarding and skiing. But uh, a lot of the time, it's on fake snow. Fake snow. Snow that has to come out of a machine artificially. And you have to ignore it being shot out of the the snowmaker and just enjoy it. What? Wait, you just fly off a ramp at the end? <laughs> They would not allow that in America. I've never seen a place that would just let you go off a ramp. A tried and true Canadian winter adventure is snow tubing. We like to call it the ultimate couch potato thrill ride. 
Yeah. You don't have to hike up a hill. You don't have to learn how to ski. Right. All you have to do is sit on an inner tube and let gravity do the work. Right. But let me tell you, it is one wild adventure. And let's check out how Mary of Calculated Traveler did on the hills. This is the first thing in this whole video series that is like, okay, Americans do partake in this, and it is fun. Hi. They actually brought a camera into the tube with them. Oh, is the strategy to spin in a circle? Is that like, make it more fun? <laughs> okay. What do we have here? Hi everyone, I'm Donald from Exploring with the Apps. We love exploring the outdoors and don't let the cold weather slow us down. Our favorite winter activity to take our little one is tobogganing. It's the quintessential Canadian family winter activity. I mean, who doesn't love sliding down a hill on a toboggan? A toboggan? You know, Americans will sled down hills. I just, in America, we just don't have a big distinction about what's a sled, what's a tube, what's a toboggan. I think I have to like Google the definition of a toboggan. Because I certainly wouldn't say that I've been tobogganing, but I may have without knowing it. Toboggan, long narrow sled used for the sport of coasting downhill over snow or ice. Hmm, but what physically makes something a toboggan? This thing they're riding here has like, uh, it's, it's not flat like a sled, it has room for your feet or, and a rope. So... I guess my only question is what what is the difference between sledding down a hill and tobogganing? It's probably it's essentially the same, right? <laughs> Toboggan just seems a little fancier. Hey, it's Christina from Mom in the Six. If you're wondering why Canadian parents love the cold and going outside in winter, it's because we have to get our kids out of the house. <laughs> you may be surprised to hear, but us Canadians take our kids to the playground all winter long. Oh, wow. I don't, yeah, I think a, lo a lot of Americans would be hesitant to, to bundle their kiddo up. Uh, to take them to a playground or something because it's not so common to let a little child run around in the snow because we just don't grow up doing that that often. Not unheard of, but not super common. I am a Canadian vlogger and I live in Woodbridge, Ontario. Okay. When you have to live in cold weather for nine months of the year, uh, you two are going to come up with very creative ideas to enjoy a sumptuous barbecue in a sub-zero temperature. Nine months of winter. That is insane. Okay. First thing... Oh, Americans love barbecue, by the way. Obsessed with it. This is <laughs> so this this hits the nail right on the head. Canadian winter barbecue? That's probably how an American would cope with winter too. We make sure to place the barbecue near the backyard door. Ah. And we also make sure that there's a shovel nearby in case we need to clear out the path. Should there be snow accumulated overnight? Okay, on a serious note, no American that I know, or probably ever, I, I'm confident in saying this, no one I know or have ever known goes outside in the winter, in the cold, and barbecues stuff. That would be extraordinarily unusual. Okay, next step is to make sure that you are dressed properly for an outdoor barbecue, which means you're gonna need your mittens, your parka, your warm boots, and of course, a toque. But now that I think of it, if you keep the grill right by your back door and you bundle up, why? What's stopping you? <laughs> okay. 
okay. You know, especially when it's winter for nine months. You, if it's winter for nine months, you gotta get your barbecue in or it's not gonna happen. Looks good. Okay. This is a winter activity I was not expecting. This like belongs in one of those only in Canada meme videos. Like only in Canada barbecuing on the grill in the dead of winter. So the day of scudoring, it started off a little shaky. What? <laughs> These dogs are pulling them. But as the day went on, I got more and more comfortable and more what? and more comfortable. What? Wait, this is this is more outrageous than the horses pulling the sleds. How do you get the dogs to... Is this the, these dogs' full-time job? Because they're way too good at this. And then you have to balance on skis. That's a whole thing. This is... Okay. <laughs> I thought this only happened in movies where people have to, like, save the day with their dog companion. This is actually real in Canada. Skidoring is like dog sledding, but instead you're actually on skis. And these dogs love to run. If you okay. fall, they try and keep going and look back at you with <laughs> your annoyance. Okay. <laughs> so it has a name, Sk Skidoring? Okay. So those are the ultimate Canadian adventures by us crazy Canucks. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out everybody in the links below. I've got their links to all their YouTube channels because they share more adventures. And be sure to subscribe to our channel because... Crazy Canucks, indeed. Uh, okay. This was really good. I, I very much enjoyed this. Uh, this was by The Planet D, by the way. And I like it. Um, man. I really, really liked this. This was just, like, pure enjoyment. And... For the most part, to my, like, surprise, you know, there's a lot of differences between Canada and America, but there's a lot of similarities, too. And when it comes to winter activities, I figured there's only, there's only so much you can do, you know, <laughs> but that's not true. And now I know that there's a lot of stuff you can do. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of weird stuff, a lot of crazy stuff, uh, but all good. Uh, really nice video. I, I actually really enjoyed this. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, stuff going on in Canada that I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.